More stories about suffering inflicted by the shutdown on American people. ABC senior national correspondent Jim Avila with an outrageous reality. Meet Maddie Major. She's eight years old and suffers from a rare form of leukemia. Her battle for life threatened each day by the lingering shutdown. It's the most devastating thing in the world to know that there could potentially be a cure for her, but because of a stalemate in the government, we can't research those options. It's mind blowing. Maddie and nearly 400 of the sickest Americans can't get cutting edge experimental care at the National Institutes of Health because the government shutdown prevents NIH from accepting new patients. I know that this has already dramatically complicated the process of finding cures and each day it goes on makes the problem much worse. Maddie's mom has a message for Congress. Spend a day with a family like me and see if you still think that your agenda is appropriate for what we are dealing with. This is Maddie. Maddie. She's eight years old. She's trying to get in a clinical trial. We took Maddie's story to Republican Congressman Steve Womack. He's on the House committee that oversees the NIH budget, and he voted for the shutdown. I wish you guys would realize that a week's delay could mean her life. Of course it can. Well, everything that happens in Washington is a process. A process that is now dragged into shutdown day 11, with hundreds of thousands of government workers still furloughed. Social Security workers in Houston today are seeing nearly half of their pay cut. But they did get this letter from their boss asking creditors to be nice. I would appreciate any assistance in the postponement, temporary reduction, or rescheduling of payments. In Florida, a federal campground padlocked today. The all-American dream, you know. And campers sent packing. They're acting like kids. As week two of the shutdown ends, its effects grow deeper and more widespread, from sick kids to closed parks and furloughed workers.